Picture a tree in your mind. And now look at the tree that's on the screen. What both of those trees have in common are branches. And in this case, the branches represent different groups of organisms that we know of on our planet. So let's start, first of all, where we're at. So we are being represented by this branch labeled Homo for Homo sapiens. Next to us, we've got Coprinus representing fungus. That's a type of a mushroom. And then below Homo is Z for Z maize, which is corn, and that's representing all of the plants. So these three branches right here, Coprinus, Homo, and Z, represent all of the fungi, animals, and plants on this planet. So those are all of the organisms that we see with our very eyes. And yet they represent a small fraction, just look at the number of branches, compared to all of the branches on this particular tree. So what do we have here? Well, first of all, since we're in this branch, we know that this is the eukaryotic branch, the eukarya. And so a lot of these others, you may not have any idea what they are. Dictostelium, what's that, right? How about this one over here? Now, Gayardia, you may, you may know, because that does cause disease. Trichomonas as well. Okay, so what's representing here, all of these are microorganisms. All of the things that are not plants, animals, or fungi. Right? And so these two branches up here, eukarya, and then bacteria, those are teeming with many, many different forms of life. The reason we often don't think of them is because they're tiny. And so microbiology is a size-based discipline. If it's smaller than you can see with your naked eye, and it is alive, or in the case of viruses, if it's not alive, but it still is metabolically active, actually viruses are not metabolically active, we'll talk about that, then it is, falls under the class of microbiology. And so while we are used to seeing things with our very own eyes, how is it that we know about all of these other types of organisms? And this is simplified. The number of microorganisms is vast, and that's through strict microbiology, like doing microscopy. There are other genetic techniques where we can pull genes out of the environment, whether it's a drop of seawater, whether it's somebody's pussy wound, and we can amplify those genes and we can sequence them and we see genetic signatures for different types of organisms that we didn't know exist. So the fields of molecular biology and genetics have greatly impacted the field of microbiology which is a size-based discipline. Because when you get so small, you need other tools than just our eye or a microscope. So to wrap this particular slide up, there's three domains of life. There's the archaea, which are dominated by extremophiles, which we will talk about, but these are the types of organisms that can live in deep sea hydrothermal vents. They can live in these salt flats, which is what we see right here in this screen. Then we've got the bacteria, which is what a lot of our course will be on, the bacteria that cause infections and disease. And then there are the eukarya. Now there are eukaryotes that cause disease. You know, athlete's foot uh, is one example of a fungus that causes disease. Uh, and so when we think about this, think about trees, okay? Because the branches of life are something that we will come back to in this course. And definitely know uh, the three branches of life, the archaea, the bacteria, and eukarya. Okay, so if we just start thinking about this size-based discipline, right, what we're looking at is, for example, these particular cell ranges. So the eukarya are the biggest. They're like our cells. Our cells, plant cells, fungal cells, 10 to 100 micrometers. Bacteria and archaea are smaller, and viruses are the smallest yet. Viruses are obligate parasites. That means that they need to be inside a host to reproduce. Now, the question of whether viruses are alive or not is a debate. Uh, most biologists so say that they are not. I would agree with that based on the definition of life. But think about the fact that viruses need to be the smallest because they always infect cells. And so if you're gonna get inside of a cell and hijack that machinery so that it makes more of you, you need to physically be smaller. Okay, so you should know the different size ranges of these. And this will come into play when you're conducting microscopy on bacteria, because then you'll get a good sense for actually what is three micrometers, 10 micrometers, and that's what the mu M stands for. And what we have up here is, for example, this is aspergillus, which is a common mold. 
This is a vegetative structure down here. And up here, all these little balls are the spores. So when you talk about breathing in mold spores, what you're talking about is breathing in all those little balls. And each one of those little balls, those spores, if it lands in the right environment with humidity, with the right temperature, with the right nutrients, uh, it can then form into a full-blown mold. Over here, what we've got is a type of a diatom, which is a eukaryotic algae. Below that, we've got a paramecium that's covered in cilia. And then over here, we've got streptococcus. And streptococcus is one of the organisms that we'll talk about fairly frequently in this class, uh, in particular, group A streptococcus, the beta-hemolytic streptococcus. And so again, for size-based discipline, to show them all kind of all in one slide here, we've got a red blood cell, which we know is pretty small, right? But in this case, uh, it is uh, about 25 micrometers. And then down here is this typical bacterium cell. And so this is particular E. coli. And then if we look at this E. coli cell, all these little, this little gang down here is now represented down here, right? And so what we see is up here in this kind of orangish is that bacterial cell. And a bit smaller than that, for example, is smallpox virus. And then we've got another virus. And then here we start having various types of uh, viruses that infect. So this is the virus this, that causes polio. And what you can see is essentially how much smaller it is than this bacteria. And then if you look at this bacterium up here, you can see how much smaller it is compared to the red blood cell. So again, size is important. And make sure you get it in your mind earlier rather than later of uh, the relative sizes of your viruses, your bacteria, and your eukaryotes. And so this is, again, just showing some more uh, high-resolution images. Uh, Saccharomyces cerevisiae is a type of a yeast, and this is just showing it budding. Uh, and that's how this particular type of yeast reproduces, is through budding. Whereas over here, again, uh, penicillium, uh, we see all of the spores. Okay? And what we see right here is a Petri dish where all these little white dots that are going around inside the Petri dish are individual bacterial colonies. And what you see in the middle here is penicillium colony. And the gap between the penicillium colony and the actual bacteria is the zone where no bacteria have grown. And that's called the zone of inhibition. So why do you suppose that bacteria are not growing close to this particular colony, right? And so in this case, this particular colony is penicillium. So what do you suppose it makes? That's right, it makes penicillin. So penicillin comes from penicillium, which is a type of a fungus. And this is showing you the ability that when you've got penicillium around and it is degrading, uh, well, it is releasing a compound, no bacteria can grow up near it. And so we will be talking extensively about antibiotics and antibiotic resistance later on in the course. These are some protozoa. And so protozoa are the more heterogeneous group. And that is because uh, they're essentially, they're not animals, they're not plants, they're not bacteria. This, they're this weird group of eukaryotes that basically we classify a whole bunch into. And so in this case, we have an amoeba over here. We've got a paramecium up here. We've got a little worm down here. And then algae, all of them are photosynthetic, but there can be eukaryotes such as diatoms. And look how beautiful these diatoms are. They're all made of glass. They make this silicate structure. Uh, and downwards to small bacteria called cyanobacteria. And this is a particular type of bacterium that can cause algal blooms and forms a nerve toxin. So you wouldn't want to uh, drink contaminated water with anabina in it. And then this is showing a particular type of a virus that is essentially uh, infecting a bacterium. And I think we've all seen pictures of this. This is really cool. It's kind of like a, a lunar lander. And that, that squiggle right there that my pointer is over, that is actually showing the genetic information, that is the uh, genetic material being injected into the cell. So again, all viruses are obligate parasites, meaning that they have to get their nucleic acid material into a particular cell in order to make more. And this is showing size. Uh, this is something you'll do in lab. Uh, you will swab your, the inside of your mouth on a particular cheek. And then what you'll do is you'll prepare a slide, you'll stain it, and you'll see your cells, which are just like this over here. And then all these little dots right here are different bacterial cells. And that's one of the great things about this class is that you will be culturing bacteria 
and you will be looking at bacteria from your own body as well as the environment around you. And then this is just showing a particular type of parasitic worm. And so uh, this is again showing the size where some of these can get large. We've got some red blood cells that are small and then this big long squirrely thing is a particular uh, parasite. So as they get bigger, then they're not really in the field of microbiology anymore, but when something is really small, then it is. And so that essentially wraps up just the brief introduction of class, uh, size-based classification of microorganisms, right? Uh, we know that the smallest are viruses. The next largest are bacteria and archaea. And then the largest group of organisms are eukarya. Okay, so there's, they're based on size, but we did not classify them based on size in the tree that we looked at. Instead, that was based on gene sequences. And so uh, get those squared away in your mind sooner rather than later.